Good morning, my little Sunday morning littles. Um, glad that you're back with me. We're here to do our second lesson um, about Thanksgiving. Last week, we did a lesson about being thankful for things that were big and things that were small and thankful for them all. And we talked a lot about different things things in our life that we were thankful for, and then we also talked about our salvation and what Jesus did for us when he died on that cross. And so I really love this season or this holiday because I absolutely love eating with my family, but I also love the fact that it makes everyone try to think of all the things that they're thankful for. And I just love this season. So today we're going to do the second lesson and it's titled, Give Thanks Unto the Lord. We're still thinking about Thanksgiving and the thing that may be a little bit different about this lesson is that this lesson happened in the Old Testament in the Bible before Jesus was ever born. And yes, our salvation and Jesus dying for us is the one thing that we need to be so thankful for, the most important blessing we ever received. But I like this story that happens in the Old Testament because it's teaching me how to be thankful in good times and bad times both, okay? So that's kind of why I chose this lesson. This lesson comes from 2 Chronicles chapter 20, and you can read with your adult um, the whole entire chapter if you'd like to, um, but this story is taken from that chapter. Okay, all right, so we're going to look at these um, children here first, and you can tell that they're doing some singing because I see musical notes all over the place. Do you see those all over the place? So these children, yes, they're singing, and they're singing praises to the Lord. So um, sometimes we forget that singing songs of praise to God is really another way to show him how thankful we are for what he does for us. Sometimes when we think about being thankful, we think that we have to say thank you, thank you, thank you. And matter of fact, that was one of the challenges or the challenge that I left at the end of your lesson last week was to see how many times you said thank you. And I know I said it a bazillion times, it feels like this week, and I'm sure you did too. But we don't realize sometimes that being thankful to the Lord doesn't always have to be in the form of the words thank you. It can come in the form of singing and praising, lifting our hands, clapping our hands, all those different ways. And I think we forget that sometimes. And it also seems to, uh, we also seem to find it easier to thank him during good times than bad times. And I find that something that I find, I find it hard to thank him sometimes or remember to thank him sometimes in bad times. Because when things are bad, we really don't focus on saying thank you for something that we don't like or something that's uncomfortable. And so we've got to train our brain to be thankful in all things. And last week, it was like big and small things. And this week, it kind of focuses on good and bad things. Okay, so we're going to talk through this story um, about a king named Jehoshaphat. And that is a big, long name. Um, and if we clap it out, it has a lot of syllables. Jehoshaphat, four syllables in that word. That's a big word. Okay, but we're going to learn a lot from him. Now, in this picture, 
Jehoshaphat is the king and you only see the back of his head and kind of like the crown that's around his head. The men that are standing in front of him look very poor. They they look like they're weary and they're tired and they may not have much. But they're messengers. That's who they are. And um, as we read in the Old Testament, we learn a lot from a good king of the Old Testament named Jehoshaphat. He gave thanks to God at a time in his life when he and his people appeared to be in big trouble. Not just one army was coming to destroy their land, but three armies were banded together to come after the land of Judah. Three. Now that doesn't look good, okay? Now these three messengers brought that troubling and bad news to Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat was a very good king, and he was king over the land of Judah. But he received a horrible, troubling message from three messengers. They told him not just one army was coming after him and his people, but three, three armies were coming after them. Yeah, three of them. And so these three armies were coming to literally destroy his land. Now, he's a good king, and he begins to really, really get worried. So he calls all of the people together. He called and gathered all of his people together and told them the frightening news that the messengers had brought to him. As he had his people gathered together, he began to pray to God for guidance and protection. He prayed this not only for himself, but the people he ruled over. So he gathered all the people in Judah together. And it wasn't just the men. It was the men, the women, and the children. And you see them all here in this picture. And he gathered them together and he began to tell them what was going to happen and what was coming their way. Not one army, but three. And he began to raise his hands. He began to pray. He didn't just scream out, oh, save us, but he did pray for guidance as to what to do because he was the king and he was ruling over these people. He did pray for protection. Don't get me wrong. He prayed for that, but he prayed and asked in a thanksgiving way. He knew in his heart when he prayed that the answer would come. He knew that. And as he was praying there with his people, there was a man that, whoops, excuse me, that stepped forth from the crowd. All those crowd of people, the crowd of people were there, and there was one man that stepped forth. His name was Jehaziel, and he stepped forth from the crowd, and he began to speak words God had revealed to him. Now, while all of Judah was praying, this particular man got a revelation. He heard words directly from God. And those words said, listen, all Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem. So that meant everybody. And King Jehoshaphat too. Thus says the Lord, do not fear or be dismayed. For the battle is not yours, it's God's. So Jehoshaphat has word that these armies are heading to destroy him and his people. And he would be very scared. And he began to pray. And as he did, through this man in the crowd, it was revealed to Jehoshaphat and all the people that this battle should not worry them because it was not their battle to fight. It was God's, and he was going to do it for them. I love those words, do not fear or be dismayed. If you're dismayed, that means you're worried. Yeah, you're really upset about what's going to happen. But the Bible tells us, do not do that. The battle's not ours, it's God's. Mm. So I look at that picture and I see the look on that man's face. He's very excited, 
He's excited about what God's revealed to him. And look at Jehoshaphat's hands. They're folded like in thanksgiving and prayer. I think this is going to make him feel a whole lot better too. I love that part or this part. I love the part where Jehaziel says, This battle is not for you to fight. Take your position and stand still and see the victory of the Lord on your behalf. So all that was required of Jehoshaphat and his people was that they take their position and their position was to stand still and then watch what happens. Sometimes it is so hard for me to stand still. How about you? And I put this picture here of this lady and she looks like she's anxious and she's worried and she don't know what to do. That's so hard sometimes for me to just stand still and watch what God does because I feel like I need to do something and that worries me or makes me very anxious. But we have to stand still and see what's happening on our behalf and what God's doing for us. That's hard to do, littles, I know. That's why I put that part in there, because it's hard for me. When Jehoshaphat and all the people heard these words, they fell on their faces and began to praise and worship God with thanksgiving. They didn't have to fight those armies. Now, if you'd been told three armies were coming to get you, and you begin to pray and you begin to worship and you begin to thank God for his love and, and all that he's done for you so far. And then you hear, you're not even going to have to fight them. I'm going to fight them for you. That's what the Lord said. And so they fell down on their faces. They fell down on their knees and then they put their face to the ground. That's offering some of the utmost thanksgiving that you can. It's showing how humble you've become in the presence of the Lord. So they fell to the ground with thanksgiving. Now, these are some priests here, and they may not be face down on the ground, but they do have their hands raised in praise. And they're thanking the Lord for, through Jehaziel, revealing what was going to happen, that they were going to be taken care of. So they are giving thanksgiving in the good and the bad times, okay? They're giving thanksgiving, praising God for what they've just learned, okay? Now, all of Judah arose early the next morning and went out into the wilderness because the Lord had told them they need to take their position. So that means they need to go out into the battle, but they need to just stand still when they get there because they're not going to have to fight. So they rose up that morning. They went out into the wilderness to fight, to stand, I guess, or to, um, to take their position. Jehoshaphat said to them, believe in the Lord your God. He then appointed priests to begin singing praises to God. So now here they're going out into battle, and he appoints priests to go before them, singing praise and thanksgiving to God. You're getting ready to go into a battle and you're singing praises. That's a bad time. That would be a very scary time. But they were singing praises. They were singing praises in the good. They were singing praises in the bad. Yeah. The praise that they gave sounded like this. Give thanks to the Lord for his steadfast love endures forever. So they began praising or began praising God and thanking him before the battle ever even started. Wow, that's having a lot of faith, littles. It is, it is. As they were singing, the Lord set an ambush against the three armies. Now the three armies were coming, but the Lord he had a different plan. He set an ambush. And if you don't know what an ambush means, it means that as they were coming, they all were surprised and began fighting amongst themselves. The three armies began fighting each other. 
They weren't worried about going after Jehoshaphat. They were fighting each other. Oh my goodness. And do you know that they utterly destroyed themselves? They destroyed themselves by fighting amongst themselves. And there was not one left in the three enemy armies that were coming to fight and conquer Judah and Jehoshaphat. Yeah, no one was left. They fought so hard that no one was left from those three armies that were supposedly big and bad in coming after Judah and Jehoshaphat. Mm -mm -mm. Jehoshaphat and all his people came and realized that they didn't have to fight to win this battle. The Lord did it all for them. He did it all for them. All they had to do was show up and take a position. Wow. Has the Lord ever fought a battle for you? I put this little picture here because he's fought battles for me. I'm saying me, 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 me. He has for me. That's right. He has. He's fought many things for me, and all I've had to do is stand still. Oh, I thank you for that, little as I do. Oops. Now, it, well, forevermore. Let's take that away. We don't want that. Okay, so it says, don't think that all of Judah and King Jehoshaphat forgot to thank the Lord in this good time. When the battle was fought, they didn't have to do it. They didn't forget to thank him then. Oh, no, 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 no. And I have it in big capital letters. Oh, no, they didn't forget. They began to praise and thank him all over again for what he had done in the good times and in the bad times. So remember, it didn't look too good when that army, those not that army, but three armies were coming after them. Didn't look too good. That was a bad time. But they begin to pray, and they begin to worship, and they begin to pray for guidance and protection. And all of that came to them. It did. It came to them. And when they received that, they fell to the ground with thanksgiving. They immediately began to praise him. Now, I see, and I'm sure that some of these people in this picture are praying. I'm sure they are. But I see a lot of musical instruments. I see a lot of hands raised in prayer or in praise. I see all that. So being thankful doesn't always have to be thank you. It can come in many, many different ways. And you know what? Sometimes it's hard to thank another person without saying the words thank you because another person can't see inside your heart. But you know, I am so thankful that the Lord knows what's inside my heart. He sees inside my heart and he knows if I'm sincere and thankful. Yeah, so that's a really cool thing that I'm thankful for. Yeah, it is. So in good times and bad, I want you to be thankful. Okay, I want you to be thankful. We must learn to thank him in the good and bad times too. I know it's hard to find things to thank him for if all things seem to be going bad. Now, one way that I think that you can apply this to your little lives is to look around you and think about all the worry and chaos that's going on in our country. Now, littles, I'm raising my right hand when I tell you this because I'm telling you the truth. I don't watch the news. I don't like to hear about it, but I do know that there's a lot going on in our nation and in our country. And I do know that there's a lot of bad, but I do know that there's good out there too. And I do feel a little bit worried and uneasy sometimes about who our president is going to be. But when I think about that, I think about how bold Jehaziel was when he stood up and said, this is not your battle. It's the Lord's battle. And you know, all you need to do is stand still. So I'm doing my best to do that. I'm not worried about who's going to be our president. I'm going to stand still and I'm going to believe that my God has already solved that problem for us. He's already fought that battle for us. And that's just one way that you can see good and bad times 
going on in our country today. So you as a little just need to remember the battle's already been fought. We don't have to go out and fight it. Okay? We don't. We only need to stand still and watch God fight this battle for us. It may be, littles, that you need to remind your grown-ups about that. Sometimes I have to be reminded of things like that, too. Some of your mommies and daddies and mamas and papas, they may be a little bit worried and upset. Remind them of this story this week, would you? Remind them of King Jehoshaphat and how he began to thank God even when three armies were heading his way. Okay, Start praising and thanking him and you will see him begin to perform a miracle that you cannot imagine. There's no way your sweet little brain could imagine what he can do for you. Yeah, that's true. I love that. Dude. Now, I want you this week to take this challenge. Um, I want you to go be thankful. Just go be thankful. It doesn't have to come in the form of words. It can come in the form of raising your hands. It can come in the form of singing a song. It can come in the form of being a witness to a grown-up that may be having a hard time with things that are going on in our country. Yeah, it could be. And you know, sometimes it's just as simple as letting someone know that they're loved. And so my little balloons down here at the bottom with my little bitmoji here is to tell you that I love you, my littles. I do. I love you and I hope that you have a great, great week. I want you to go out and be like Jehoshaphat this week. Thank him in the good and the bad times. Okay? All right. And I will see you next week for the third lesson about Thanksgiving. Okay? Go be thankful, little Jehoshaphats. <laughs>